Hello, and welcome to the 2023 Home and CDBG Application Workshop. I am Pat Evans, Community Development Manager with the City of Omaha Planning Department. I will briefly review some highlights of the application process, as well as requirements of the two funding sources. This workshop is recorded and will be available to you through April the 8th, 2022. I encourage you to contact me with any questions or concerns prior to application if you are new to using federal funding and would like project development assistance or verification of activity, eligibility, and pre-application technical assistance. Presentation review will include home and CDBG program funding highlights, RFP application process, submission instructions and contact information, and a brief overview of the applications themselves. CDBG and home funding, community development block grant funds are called CDBG, which we will reference uh, in the continuing slides. It's a federal program to improve low to moderate income households and neighborhoods by creating or enhancing decent housing, suitable living environments, and economic development opportunities. Home Investment Partnership, otherwise known as Home Funding, is a federal program to create affordable housing opportunities for low to moderate income households. The estimated funding, and again, these are based on past allocations. We do not have the amounts as yet from Congress, but again, these are estimates. For the 2023 CDBG funding, we estimate approximately 4,500,000. It's estimated to be available November 2023. The 2023 home funding is estimated to be approximately 2200 It again is estimated to be available November 2023. An overview of our process and our timeline is the application period is from February the 11th through April the 8th, 2022. Professional staff will review the applications and rank them um, April through May of 2022. Once that is completed, they are then submitted to the mayor and city council for review, and that's around in May. The preliminary award notifications will go out in letter form to those that uh, are preliminarily awarded funding from these two sources in June of 2022. We will hold a public hearing and a 30-day comment period in August of 2022. It then goes, the draft agreement then goes to the planning board and city council for approval, and that should be during the month of September 2022. Once that it's approved, we then have to wait for our allocation from Congress through HUD to us, and that usually happens around in the spring. So once we get that application, we are then able to submit our final document to HUD for approval, usually between April and August, and that would be in 2023. Once we get the HUD approval on our action plan, that includes that uh, budget that we have been uh, developing from the RFP process, we will then enter into written agreements that's anticipated to start in November of 2023 and go through potentially June of 2024. After you've been awarded funding, then there are documenting um, requirements and monitoring requirements, and that will be done from the time of award through either under home funds, the what's called the affordability period, or until the compliance period is met under the CDBG funding. The primary objective of the Community Development Block Grant Program, or CDBG, is to benefit low moderate income persons. At least 70% of the City of Omaha CDBG allocation must be allocated to activities which meet the primary objective of benefiting LMI persons. CDBG activities must meet one of the three national objectives, benefit low and moderate income persons, otherwise called LMI. Low income is at or below 50% MI and moderate income is at or below 80% AMI. Aid in the prevention or elimination of blights or slums. And three, meet community development needs having a particular urgency because existing conditions pose a serious and immediate threat to the health 
or welfare of the community and other financial resources are not available to meet such needs. Some examples of the many ways the city can spend CDBG money are to create jobs, repair homes and businesses, pay for community services, create affordable housing, and build infrastructure like streets, sidewalks, and sewers. The City of Omaha will prioritize funding for CDBG in the following categories. Economic development, including commercial rehabilitation of publicly and privately owned non-residential structures that may or may not be limited to exterior and correction of code violations, including acquisition, construction, and rehabilitation. The second category would be job creation and retention activities. Job training is allowed if that job training results in a permanent job placement um, and a full-time status. The job retention category, uh, you have to show that those jobs would be lost without CDBG funding and they must benefit low moderate income individuals. The third category would be a micro enterprise program. And that's a program that the owners are persons who are working toward developing, expanding, stabilizing their businesses and they have no more than five employees, including themselves. The last category under economic development would be removal of architectural barriers, which restrict the mobility and accessibility of disabled persons. The next priority would be housing development, including the rehabilitation of rental single and multifamily residential structures and the conversion of closed buildings to residential use. A separate application that we have under CDBG is for public service. The activities that we will prioritize under the per public service category and in application is job training for youth ages 16 to 21 and adults. A public service activity must increase level of service or be a new service. CDBG funds cannot substitute for agency funds and only 15% of our total CDBG budget is available. I show an example here, 15% times the 4.5 million, that equals approximately 675,000 that can be designated for public service activities. The only exception to this percentage limitation is activities that are carried out by qualified community-based development organizations or CBDOs in certain target areas. That's North and South Neighborhood Revitalization Strategy Areas or the NRSA. If you want additional information on CBDO, please contact me, Pat Evans. Um, my contact information will be at the end of this presentation. I can then send you an application and additional information on the CBDO uh, formation. We're showing here a CDBG funding information matrix, basically. We'll show you what is going to be needed in your match, uh, what your minimum request should be, or what your maximum request can be, and if project delivery can be included. Project delivery are those costs that are associated with direct delivery of the service. So that can include staff time, staff cost, materials that are associated with the delivery of that particular project or service. Um, here we show economic development being listed out into those priority activities and what those matches are. That's commercial rehabilitation, job creation retention, architectural barrier removal, and the micro enterprise program. If you notice that all have a requirement of a minimum 10% match funding. You want to pay attention to the minimum request as well as the maximum request for those particular projects. Under housing development, you're looking at rehabilitation and conversion. Note under conversion, there is a 20% match, which is different from the, re the other categories of 10%. Under public serving for job, under public service for job training, there is a minimum 10% match as well. For the home funding, we're going to look at what we have prioritized and what is eligible under the home application. The home funds are only for affordable housing, including new construction, and that's rental and home ownership housing. Rehabilitation, which includes alteration, improvement, or modification of an existing structure. Reconstruction, rebuilding housing on the same lot. And I must say that we've not ever really used that category, although it is an allowed category under the home funding. 
conversion, usually a rehabilitation. When converting market rate housing to affordable housing, you cannot convert housing to commercial activities. Site improvements must meet standard of surrounding projects. Acquisition of property, uh, that includes home buyer program and rental housing projects. Acquisition of vacant land, construction must begin within 12 months of a uh, eligible housing activity on that land. Demolition, only if home project begins construction within 12 months. Again, demolition is associated with a new construction project that has to start within 12 months. Down payment assistance and closing cost assistance, purchase, rehab, and resale, uh, including the acquisition, infrastructure, development subsidy, and or down payment assistance, and the tenant-based rental assistance, which we currently use OHA to administer. Some requirements of the home program is all housing developed with home funds must serve low and very low income families. Low income families are at 80% area median income, AMI, and very low income families are at 50% AMI. For rental housing, at least 90% of the families benefited must have incomes at or below 60% AMI. The remaining percent of the families benefited must have incomes at or below 80% AMI. Homeownership assistance must be to families with incomes at or below 80% AMI. There is an affordability attached to the home funding. The length of affordability period depends on the home activity and amount of funds in the project. That is a period that can go from five years to 20 years. Tenants must meet income restrictions. Each year HUD publishes the applicable home income limits by area adjusted for family size. Property owners must maintain affordable rents. Each year HUD publishes the applicable home income limits and rent limits by area adjusted for bedroom size. For projects with five or more home assisted rental units, 20% of the units must be rented to very low income families or those 50% and under. The city now requires a 20% match for all construction projects. There must be a minimum request of 1,000 and a maximum request of 1 million. Our average allocation is 500,000. The city does not commit to multi-phase project funding. Funding is committed to one phase with remaining phases considered when funding available and applied for. The eligible home recipients could be housing development organizations producing affordable housing, not-for-profit or public agencies administering housing programs, for-profit completing a project consistent with HUD requirement, community housing development organizations or CHODOs, and faith-based organizations. Federal requirements that are both applicable both to home and CDBG um, are the following. Section 3, which is employment and economic opportunities that are directed to low and very low income persons, particularly recipients of government assistance for housing. An affirmative marketing plan, which targets individuals who due to their race, color, national origin, sex, gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, familiar status, disability, and or limited English proficiency may not know about opportunities or feel welcome to apply. Minority and women owned business enterprises, the city has a policy that you will be asked to sign on to. Labor standards uh, typically are the Davis-Bacon and the related acts, and that does play a very important part with the CDBG funding. Environmental review, and we'll visit more about that further on. All projects have to pass the National Environmental Protection Act clearance. Residential anti-displacement and relocation. Reasonable benefits and relocation assistance to any person involuntarily and permanently displaced. We do not encourage projects that would displace anyone. If you think that you may be having to relocate someone or a business or people, um, please let us know ahead of time because that in itself is a process and has its own requirements and must be done according to the regulations. Debarment and suspension. Uh, again, we'll talk about that further. Property standards, CDBG has property standards, uh, rehab standards, as well as home has new construction and rehab standards that will have to be met with uh, construction projects. Income and rent limits, again, HUD 
sends us those. They are updated annually through HUD and when you're doing rental projects they're going to be subject to rent limits. All of our projects are subject to income limits and underwriting requirements. For underwriting requirements, the city uses underwriting and subsidy layer guidelines before committing home and CDBG funds. The city must demonstrate it has independently evaluated the project budget, financing and development capacity and schedule, including market assessment or needs assessment as required, development capacity assessment, which includes previous experience, financial stability, current projects, community engagement, funding sources, and collaborations. Project review, we'll be looking at whether it's an eligible activity, how it meets, if it's CDBG a national objective, how it coincides with our consolidated plan priorities, and our action plans priorities. Establishing the level of subsidy capacity, proposed management agent, and that is if you are doing a construction project for particularly rental and you have a management company, we are going to evaluate that company's capacity, experience, and uh, understanding of the federal rules and documentation that is required. The construction schedule becomes very important in the expenditure and drawdown of funds. Environmental review and remediation, and again we will talk about that, design and site control, and community outreach efforts, which also include outreach to the council person that's in the district of the project that you are participating doing work in. I'm going to briefly go over the RFP application and review process. The applications can be found at https planning h cd.cityofomaha.org slash cdbg dash home h-o-m-e dash app app submission instructions include submitting a digital copy in a pdf with all attachments to h-c-d-c-o-m-m-e-n-t-s at cityofomaha one word dot org you also will submit one original signed hard copy application, three hole punched in a three ring binder, and you'll submit that to the City of Omaha Planning Department. To my attention, Community Development Manager Pat Evans, 1819 Farnham Street, Room 1111, Omaha, Nebraska 68183. The application must be submitted no later than April 8th, 2022 by 4.30 p.m. Incomplete and incorrectly completed applications will be returned. Late applications will not be accepted. All applications must only be signed by the executive director or authorized officer of the corporation. The overall thresholds that must be met by the applications is that the application is in correct format and contains all required attachments. If you do not attach a required attachment, then you must put an explanation of why it is missing. Other formats will result in rejection of the application. The project or the program proposed is an eligible activity. The project meets one of the national objectives if it is a CDBG application. Project provides housing or housing opportunities and that's rental or rehabilitation if you are doing a construction project. Project meets at least one of the priorities in the consolidated plan and that is neighborhood revitalization, affordable housing, homelessness services, non-homeless persons with special needs. Project provides at least minimum match requirement. And note, additional consideration is given for projects located within the NRSA areas. Project program is located within the North NRSA or the South NRSA, and there is a map included um, to each application showing where that location is. What I've also included here is the evaluation criteria. We do have a scoring matrix that is included at the end of the CDBG's application, where you can see all the points that we are looking at as staff evaluators um, at your proposal. This is just kind of a synopsis of those uh, key points that 
are going to be scored throughout the applications. For CDBG, we are looking at general information, applicant information, project, project budget and financing, community served, collaboration, housing production evaluation if it's a housing project. Priority points will be given for located in north or south revitalization area or the NRSAs. Commercial facade improvement, we are looking to do more of that facade and commercial rehabilitation. Multifamily rehabilitation is also given for priority points. Under the public service application, we are looking at general information, applicant information, project, project budget and financing, community served, and the match requirement, which is a minimum of 10%. The home evaluation will be looking at applicant, project name, funding request, project type, type of assistance, project description, site information, project completion, building type, funding, development team experience, and bonus points will be awarded for the intent of the application for a CHOTO status, which is included in your application, and priority points will be located for projects located in North or South Revitalization Area or the NRSAs. Another level of analysis will be done by staff uh, for housing proposals. So in addition to the rating criteria, projects consisting of new construction or comprehensive rehabilitation of rental or owner-occupied housing will also include a staff summary of the following items included in the proposal. Project underwriting and subsidy layer and review, affordability, energy efficiency enhancements, universal design features, proximity to employment, proximity to public transit, and proximity to neighborhood amenities. Project considerations for all funding. I want to make sure and note that funding is provided for projects rather than organizations. We are not funding a greater program or an entire organization. We are funding an activity that you are conducting within your general uh, way that you do business. We kind of carve out what we are funding both with staff with budget and our documentation. So if you think of the project that you are proposing as a standalone uh, project within maybe your greater scope of work, uh, the, the better it would be. We look at project risk. Uh, we look at the site control, whether you currently own the property, if you've done some pre-development kinds of things neighborhood involvement, how have you contacted the surrounding neighbors, how have you contacted your council person, have you gotten feedback from them, if you do please include that in your application as well. Planning and zoning compliance to see if you're going to have to do some waivers, or request some waivers, that whole process there if you've done again pre-development and looked at some of those things and the environmental impact, what if you have some environmental problems with your with your project and stuff, how are you anticipating on remediating some of that, um, looking at environmental justice as well in our communities and our neighborhoods, and a phase one is requested to be submitted with your application if you are doing construction. Again, if you have any questions or assistance for inquirers and technical assistance, please contact me, Patricia Evans or Pat Evans. I'm the Community Development Manager. I can be found at patricia.evans at cityofomaha.org or 402-444-5150, extension 2011. I'm available Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, if you want to see me in person, please let's make an appointment so I can make sure that I am here to address your needs. Uh, to view projects tentatively awarded funding from the 2022 RFP, which was uh, a year ago application cycle, and we are submitting our final 2022 action plan to HUD for those uh, applications that are being funded. You can visit https bit.ly slash 31vbgti. Goes is still in public comment through February the 27th. After the public comment period, we will be then ready to submit it to our council for approval and then further on to HUD for approval. To learn more about each program, please visit the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development or HUD uh, for the CDBG program and for the HOME program.
just to look briefly at the applications now, we do have three applications. One is for the CDBG program and the priorities that are under that. A CDBG public service application, if you remember the priority was job training for youth and for adults, and a home application for the home funding. Right now, the CDBG application will review some of the activities and the requirements. The primary objective of the Community Development Block Grant Program is to develop viable communities by providing affordable, decent housing, thriving and viable living environments, and economic opportunities principally for low and moderate LMI income persons. At least 70% of the City of Omaha CDBG allocation must be allocated to activities which meets the primary objective of benefiting LMI persons. The city strongly supports mixed income housing and activities that will support a holistic approach to neighborhood and community development. Environmental assessment phase one must be submitted with the application. An environmental review record, ERR, and clearance must be prepared before federal dollars are expended or cost incurred for any CDBG approved program or activity. In addition, no contracts may be ex executed, loan settled, or work started on a project awarded CDBG funds before the environmental review process is completed. A violation of this requirement may jeopardize federal funding to the project and disallow all costs that were incurred before the completion of the environmental review. Labor standards. The Davis-Bacon and related acts apply to contractors and subcontractors performing on federally funded or assisted contracts in excess of $2,000 for the construction, alteration, or repair, including painting and decorating of public buildings or public works. CDBG funds have a threshold for single family housing development. Multifamily developments funded with CDBG will be subject to Davis-Bacon requirements. The Davis-Bacon Act is a federal law that governs the wages to be paid to laborers and mechanics employed on federal public work projects. Debarment and suspension. All organizations, companies, corporations, and agencies applying for federal dollars must have an active registration in the Systems Award Management, otherwise called SAM, and submit their unique entity identifier, UEI number, in the application for funding. Now that UEI number is replacing the DUNS number. So you might want to look to see if it is time uh, for you to renew your SAM registration um, or if you have to get that UEI number uh, rather than a DUNS number. Organizations should verify that they have a SAM registration and UEI number or take steps needed to obtain one as soon as possible. Applicants may complete both requirements by visiting SAM.gov. The CDBG Public Service application, uh, we're going to briefly look at the activities and reporting requirements. There's a minimum 10% match requirement. Activity can include project delivery costs, and that could be staff costs and associated cost of program, not operating cost, to the overall programming. Usually represents a percentage of the entire program. Let me explain. If you are running a normal program and you are using staff to use the portion that is funded with CDBG funding, that typically will represent a percentage of their overall time. CDBG funds can pay that percentage of activity, staff cost, material cost for the CDBG specific program and eligible participants. So when you are crafting your budget, because we don't typically fund a program at 100%, you're looking at a percentage of staff time, a percentage of space cost, a percentage of utility cost, a percentage of equipment usage, um, and material cost that would be represented in the CDPG budget for that particular activity if you are going to use project delivery cost. Also, project delivery cost comes from the program dollars. It is not in addition to program dollars. So if you're requesting 100,000, out of that 100,000, you would be able to pay project delivery costs, but that now reduces your actual service costs, your actual program cost availability. 
Reporting is on participants or recipients of service or training. Household income is considered for income eligibility. City uses part five definition of income that includes all household members above the age of 18 and asset. So we'll look at the home application briefly and the activities and requirements for home. We did mention quite a few home requirements in the previous slides, but we'll review those here. Again, environmental assessment, same requirement as what was under the CDPG. Phase one must be submitted with the application. Please do not start anything without having the environmental requirement completed. The phase two would be completed by the planning department here if needed. An implementation plan becomes very important with home funding. Home funded projects must start construction within 12 months of the agreement. We typically uh, enter construction project agreements for a 12 to 18 month term and all funding must be available as documented when the agreement goes into effect. So any matching funds that you're bringing for the remainder of the project must be in place and we must have letters of commitment or actual firm commitment and availability of funds to complete the project. Home has some limitations. A uh, project is subject to subsidy limits, how much home funds we can actually put into a project. Project subject to maximum sales price if you are doing new construction for homeowner. Um, there is a maximum price that you can sell a, a rehabbed house for as well as new construction. A project may be subject to rental limits throughout the affordability period and again that could be from five years to a 20-year period and that is the rent is limited and HUD issues the, the rents annually so they will change or can change and the project is subject to income limits throughout the affordability period uh, so the if it's a homeowner project that person has to that household has to remain eligible through closing if it's CDBG, they remain eligible through the affordability period. There is a monitoring requirement, uh, more specifically under home. If there's rental, there's annual reporting on tenants throughout the affordable period. You, we require a 12 month lease. The tenant must be and remain income eligible. And there is a physical site and unit inspection based upon the number of units in the project homeowner there's a maximum sales price the income of the household is looked at they do not have to be related persons in the household it is household and household is 18 years and above that have any source of income and assets and that equals the eligibility and then you have the affordability period which is attached to if we provide down payment assistance or if down payment assistance is, is afford it through your program, there is an affordability on that to the homeowner. CHOTO is a designated organization that is under home. Uh, the city is required to have a set aside for CHOTOs. Some of the requirements are, CHOTOs are required to meet certain legal and organizational requirements and they have the capacity and experience to carry out affordable housing.